Great, so we're on live now on Zoom and we're recording. Welcome, Brooke Hender. And uh, we have met virtually before. And I think this year is the year of virtual meetings. Uh, you know, I feel I know you a little bit, but you know, how, how well can we know people when we've never met them sort of face to face? But it's interesting this year because I think we're all getting used to um, getting a sense of people online from simple things like body language, you know, background. I mean, I always try and have something clear and you've got some nice things there, but sometimes people disappear into into the San Francisco bridge and things. You know? Yeah, the virtual backgrounds are great, but uh, yeah, it is. It, it's like a, a weird magic, uh, early magic trick with people fading in and out. In and out. And especially if they've got big hair, I've noticed it's like their head disappears in their head. <laughs> It's, it can be a bit frightening. Anyway, thank God we've got small hair, you and I. Yes. And, and um, I've had a look at your website. I've, I've, I, I like the way you work. You know, you can explain a bit more about yourself. But from what I know, you work with cognitive hypnotherapy. So you help people um, to get from where they are now to where they want to be. And I love something you said about help people tell better stories about mm. their life. We would all like to tell better stories um lots of testimonials on your website you know over 20 testimonials and um, it was really hard writing all of them <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i'm sure and also <laughs> i like the podcast I, I was listening to the first podcast very interesting so if people want to know more about you and your background i think today <clears throat> we're not going to go into that so much but um i think it, it leads me to my first question in a minute but maybe you can describe a little bit more about what, how you would describe what you do, because I, I think that probably doesn't do it justice, just cognitive hypnotherapy. So. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it, it is interesting, this, this question of how to describe uh, myself and what I do. So I trained as a cognitive hypnotherapist, uh, and the truth is most people don't know, they have an idea of what, what hypnotherapy is. You know, it's like, oh, is it hypnosis? Is it, you know, and then there's clinical hypnotherapy, there's cognitive hypnotherapy, there's, it's a, it's a very veritable minefield. And it's the same with a lot of therapeutic approaches. Um, and over the years, since I've trained as, uh, trained in that, I've also trained in metaphor work uh, with Andy Austin in his Metaphors of Movement, and also with Nick Kemp with his, what's called provocative change works, which is based on the work of, uh, Frank Farrelly's provocative therapy, which is a very different approach. And so I do struggle with, I sometimes just come back to therapists, but sometimes that could be like beauty therapist or massage therapist. So it's, it's, uh, it's, I, so I stick with cognitive hypnotherapist for the moment. Yeah. And I like, I like your direct approach. You, you're often saying things like, and I don't know if it's on your website, sort yourself out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So my, so sort yourself out comes from that partly because I think it's really important to take ownership and accept responsibility for what's going on in our lives, irrespective of what's happened to us and who created it. And, you know, we gain more power when we decide to take ownership and accept responsibility. We take back the power and we can go, OK, irrespective of why I'm in this situation, I'm in this situation. So what can I do about it? And the play on words with sort yourself out is most problems are on some level about how we feel about ourselves. I would say, you know, it underpins virtually everything because, you know, our self-esteem or our relationship with ourselves is, is critical and drives all our relationships and behaviours. Um, that's what I believe. So the sort yourself out is sort your self-esteem out and things will change out of that. So, uh, so yes, that's that's pretty much, and yeah, the that that direct approach I think really comes from the uh, maybe the provocative work a bit more, which I'll I'm happy to talk about a bit more. Yeah, maybe later later yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. But I like it because I I felt the first time I saw you on uh, you know in, in one of these you know online meetings, it was quite provocative. I thought, God, that's an interesting way to to discuss you know, and introduce yourself, but it's also, you know, it's very clear and very honest and truthful. And I think that has a, has definitely has a place Whereas some yeah. people are very wishy washy and you don't know what, what that, you know, what they're going on about. And, um, but I, I like that sort of direct, direct approach. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I like to use humor. I think, uh, 
you know, I take my I take my work seriously. I try not to take myself seriously. And I think humor, if we can start thinking, even at the most basic level, if we can start thinking about our problem and laughing at it, it's going to change it. But, you know, generally people take their problems really seriously. And I, and I don't mean that in a dismissive way that we shouldn't take our problems seriously. But taking them seriously hasn't worked so far. And so the first thing I like to do is try and get people to, to think about them in a different way. And humor is a great tool in that arsenal. And why shouldn't you have fun doing therapy? It, it's going to be challenging, yeah. but why shouldn't you be able to laugh and have a joke? Uh, you know, I, I'm not that sort of therapist. Great. I mean, I, I, I love the fact that the British, I think, are one of the best races to who you know that take make fun of themselves. I mean, I'm Italian. Italians don't make fun of themselves that much. They make fun of others. The French make fun of the Belgians. Belgians are the French. The Germans are the Dutch. The Dutch. I mean, the whole world of others. But the British, one of the few you know, with faulty tower, you know, all, all these great comedies. And I think that's a great release, you know, that we can we can laugh. Ourselves. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, unfortunately, I do suspect that we're falling into a trend of taking ourselves a little bit too seriously and losing that sense of humour about ourselves. Um, I think there's a, a more general cultural trend about that sort of area, but yeah, much no, too right. big a topic to, to talk that's, about that's, here. That's for another time, but you're right. Yeah, you definitely. Nowadays, you can't say anything about anyone, almost. Well, people like that there is a, you know, being offended, in my opinion, is a choice. Mm. You know, you can say what you like about me. I can choose to be offended or not, and I choose not to be offended. Mm. You know, if, if you don't like the way I work, that's okay. If you don't like my hair, that's okay. If you don't like my salt and pepper beard, that's okay. <laughs> I, it, it, it doesn't matter to me. You yeah. know, uh, it's a choice. Yeah. And, you know, in a world that I have very little control over, how I choose to react to things is something I do do have a choice over. Great. And and it brings me to one of the main points today is, you know, it's been such a you know difficult year and is continuing to be mm. so, especially with Christmas coming up. Um, what do you have some sort of um, tips? I mean, obviously, people can can work with you. I'll put the sort of website underneath later. And I think yeah. you're a free consultation is that right yeah absolutely I'm, i always welcome a conversation because uh, you know i might not be the right person yeah good so. So up later but any advice for this year where in particular i mean you know i have a daughter who's like uh, you know 22 and i'm seeing especially among young people which we haven't seen before you know so many issues with you know anxiety depression yeah really serious whereas in the past we've been used to people having therapy kind of at an older age or trying to sort things out and now like the whole of society is affected and us as parents are affected by you know children we're quite worried that if we can't see them you know they're at uni and they're locked up uh, you know so do you have any sort of tips for you know how we can we can navigate these these really difficult times yeah, it's interesting because uh, I, I agree uh, this year, particularly anxiety. Uh, I think the two words that I've noticed the most are anxiety and overwhelm. And, you know, when I, you know, what is anxiety? Well, it's completely future based. That's the first thing. You can't be anxious about something that happened in the past. Mm. And so... I, I like to tell people and this isn't an original thought. I got this from somebody else or, or a whole, you know, I stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, you know, anxiety is using your imagination unhelpfully. You're doing a whole series of what ifs. Mm -hmm. And so I always encourage people to think about where they actually are mm -hmm. and to, to, you know, planning is one thing. And there's nothing wrong with planning. Oh, I need to go on a journey. What do I need? What do I need to buy? What do I need to... That's planning. But then thinking about that journey and going, but what happens if the taxi breaks down? What if I have to walk to the station? What if the suitcase is too heavy? What if I lose my suitcase? What if I get mugged? What if the train doesn't work? What happens if the train derails? What? That's still using your imagination, but just really unhelpfully. So I'm always, when, when, when it comes to anxiety, I'm always just trying to get people back to the present moment. Now, there is no one right technique for that. So, you know, for some that's meditation. For some that's connecting with nature and walking. For some, it could be Qigong. There is no right way. And I don't 
ever you know and it depends on the individual as to what it could be running swimming yeah. it's just about bringing them back to the present moment and realizing and putting things into a greater context and that's the other thing is you know if you could zoom out and look at this year in relation to other years and to put it into a greater context you know this too shall pass this is just a moment in time this is not your whole life it is what you're experiencing right now however you know but remember this is not everything yeah um, and those things can be really helpful for people but it, it is an individual there are you know I wish there were a magic wand to be able to help people with these things, but uh, it is an individual journey. But I think you're right. This idea of seeing the big picture. I mean, you know, our great grandparents or great grandparents were in world wars. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, they went through all kinds of things and, you know, were dying for their country. And I had absolutely being asked to stay at home. But even the staying at home, I think the isolation is something that people have not, you know, maybe either never had or been thrown together <laughs> with with family. <laughs> a few days a year yeah absolutely no you're you're right i mean i think you make a very good point you know when we look back at those major events like the second world war or the first world war you know we go oh well it lasted from 1939 to 1945 but they didn't know that yeah, yeah. in 1939 they didn't know it was going to last until 1945 they just lived it day by day they didn't know what was going to happen next they didn't know whether america would come into the war they didn't know what the outcome would be and you're living with that uncertainty every single day and getting bombed or you're fighting or you're at home you're working in a munitions factory it's a very different experience and you have to get through that so uh yeah absolutely we're always having to face things in this moment in time yeah it's it's not easy uh but we will get through it yeah or no, not yeah yeah or, yeah well we have yeah. well that's the reality isn't it we don't know what's going to happen we don't and but all we can do is how can i deal with this in the best way i can right now i might not get it right i may not it may not be the best job but what can i do right now that's helpful for me so being present seeing the big yeah and small tips for maybe the the, the younger generation things like I've, I've heard things like you know maybe journaling or yeah know, right? absolutely um, you know that we're grateful for so bringing ourselves to the present and realizing that yeah i think all of those things are really really useful i mean i i journal um you know i think for some people grat gratitude journals uh anything where you're allowing yourself to express how you're thinking and how you're feeling uh and doing so in a way that's without judgment uh you know from others so you can just be yourself and go this is this is how i feel this is what i'm thinking mm -hmm. and the very act of getting it out is is helpful i believe yeah, no, I, yeah, 100%. I think one of the issues, maybe biggest issues is when people express it kind of electronically in text or, or, or voice, you know, there's a lot of misunderstandings. Whereas with things like the journaling, I try and write by hand or yeah. gratitude, you know, I take time. And I think with the younger generation, it's it all seems to be electronically and, and something gets lost in that, don't you think? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think there is you know you and i are both older yeah <laughs> you know we we come from a different generation yeah um we haven't grown up with phones and computers in the same way uh interestingly i use a computer for my journaling um and yet i use notepad when i'm taking notes and stuff so i, I think it's whatever works and i think it's better to do it than not do it mm. uh yes i love the connection of a pen or a pencil on paper uh, it doesn't go anywhere uh, and but again you can use electronic means you don't have to publish it to the world i think social media is it, it is like all tools it can be an amazingly positive and useful tool and it can be incredibly negative and i think if you open yourself up in, in a particular way on a particular platform expecting validation you might be going about it in the wrong way yeah it, you know i don't uh, i i personally think it's you know it can be an amazing place to be uh, but also it's very easy to walk around a, into an unknown territory with dark footpaths <laughs> and no street lamps wow okay 
Thank you. And how do you keep, maybe we'll finish on this one. How do you keep yourself inspired? Because I know you've, you've been busy this year, you know, very yeah. busy, so much going on. And do you, do you have to really force yourself to take time for self-care? Do you find it hard? Do you, you know, what do you do yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, this year has definitely been challenging. I'd love to be able to sit here and go, I've done an amazing job this year. Actually, I didn't. The first lockdown, uh, I struggled. I I found it a really big challenge and I found every day one day I'd be waking up going right today I'm going to do this and this I'm going to network and, and other days I'd be like right I'm just going to sit and watch Marvel movies all day and that's what I did and every time I went through uh, you know went to the bathroom it's via through our kitchen and every time I walked through the biscuits were going hey hello eat me so I, I put on probably a stone in weight during the lockdown uh, you know but I didn't beat myself up over it. It was what it was, and I went through that process, and I learned a lot from it. Um, and then once lockdown came down, I managed to go start walking and swimming again. I lost the weight quite easily, but I didn't hate myself as a result of it. But I did discover a lot about how I dealt with a situation, um, and so that was really useful. Yes, I've continued to work online, and actually that's been really, really interesting and a lot of clients who traditionally would meet in a room somewhere have actually found that working online has actually been much better than they expected and in some ways even better than meeting in person. Yeah. Uh, I record all my sessions and I send my sessions in full to the client, which is quite unusual uh, because I want them to listen back and to discover for themselves what they discover. There's, you know, there, It's a very different thing when you're in a session and then listening back to yourself in a session and and people make really useful and helpful discoveries from that process uh, the most powerful change comes from the change we make ourselves from the discoveries we make ourselves so i can easily recognize a pattern and say did you know that every time i ask you a difficult difficult question you just laugh and they go oh i didn't realize that that's really interesting but if i let them listen back and they'll come back to me and they'll go oh my god I can't believe it. I never answer your questions. Every time you ask a diff difficult question, I just laugh. Oh my God. That change is infinitely more powerful. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why I do that. And so being able to do that online with Zoom, recording is very easy. It's it's automatically done. I can send the file straight off to them. Uh, you know, bookings are very easy. And once the session's over, there's no travel. Yeah, and it's great to have the recording. I, I haven't heard many people send the recording. I, I send my Qigong recordings. Yeah. It happens. People maybe get into a deep state and they forget exactly what they're doing. And then they want to yeah. do it. Okay, it was something very simple, but they got into a medita meditative state. And yeah. then they just repeat and uh, get the benefits. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's a very, very helpful thing to do. And uh, it, it, the, the, the change process doesn't take place in the session. The session is not the important thing. It's what happens in between the sessions. And so allowing people to to listen back, to discover, to share uh, is is really, really powerful and really helpful. And those are, you know, that idea came from uh, Andy Austin and, and Nick Kemp, where, uh, you know, they both do that, record their sessions and send to the clients. When I first did that, I was like, oh, my God, there's going to be a full record of everything I do. Yeah. Actually, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. You know, I don't have to worry. I don't worry about notes. I can just be completely engaged uh, and, and you know, work in the moment. Actually, maybe we can end on the provocative, uh, what you mentioned earlier. Cause I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very interesting. It, so, you know, the, the general Rogerian approach is obviously uh, unconditional regard for the client. And I, I don't, I'm, I don't step away from that. Uh, simply put, provocative change works or provocative therapy is uh, advocating for the problem, which is sort of a bit counterintuitive. It's not it's not like just reverse psychology. There are a lot of nuanced and subtleties to the approach, but it's essentially advocating for the problem. So somebody says, oh, well, I eat too much. And I go, well, OK, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? It's good that you know that you're providing yourself with constant sustenance, and you know it, that. What's wrong with that? Now that's not what they're necessarily expecting, and quite often they're, they're going to have to go. Oh, 
they have to have a bit of an argument with themselves is do I think do I agree with that statement or do I not agree with that statement but it's a very visceral pro process yeah. uh, I'm looking to bypass the intellectual response and to get a, an emotional response people don't react emotionally to stuff they don't care about mm -hmm. people don't if people if I said something about your red your orange shirt yeah, yeah. you know if you were a bit dubious or doubtful about it, you might have a very different reaction to the fact that it's completely unimportant. If I said, oh, I can't believe yeah. you're wearing that shirt, Alessandro. I mean, you know what they say about men of your age who wear those sort of orange shirts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too polite to say so. Now, exactly, you'd probably laugh because it doesn't bother you at all. Yeah. But if yeah. you got really angry, yeah. I know that I've somehow touched a nerve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that, that's not an intellectual reaction. That's, a, that's an emotional reaction. And there's something there. And then I can continue. At least, I imagine it begins some kind of. Um, yeah, it's it's shifting, yeah. you know, irrespective of how you've got the problem, irrespective of how how anything is, how you're feeling about yourself or what the situation is. Every day you maintain that problem structurally, irrespective of what's happened or how you created it, you maintain it. There is a structure in place that maintains the problem. My job is to destroy that structure in whatever way I can. Because if I destroy the structure, you you can't do the problem. So I imagine it goes quite quickly into into the issue and can maybe you know, or around the issue or behind the issue or under the issue. One, it, whatever the the thing is, it's not going back. Uh, and again, I, this is not a criticism of that approach. I, I use those tools and I have used them successfully over a number of years. Uh, it's not traditional reframing of doing a timeline going back what did you what can you what can you your younger self understand about that situation now change it that process is about getting a new thought yeah so that you because it's not what happened it's how you feel about what happened yeah and so it's getting you to feel or think something differently about that this is just another way of achieving the same thing yeah. you know uh, and so i'm not saying that my approach is the only approach or the right approach it's just the way i work uh, because I found it to be highly effective and I enjoy working that way. And yeah. why shouldn't I have fun? Good. And no, it sounds like a great way to work. That's why I wanted to ask about it. And finally, I'll just say, I, I heard on you say, I think on the podcast or on the website, usually six sessions is about the max, sometimes even two sessions. And I, I like that because we're used to the American model we hear about on TV. They're seeing their therapists for 30 years. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I th and I think there's, I think there's merit in having somebody that you can talk to on a regular basis who's yeah. impartial, who knows you, who's non-judgmental, who, you know, who's who's going to provide you with an outlet. I don't I think there's merit in that. But that's not what I do. Mm. I'm interested in bringing about lasting change and it's just about getting that new thought. Mm. And now sometimes a new thought only takes a second. Suddenly we, you know, we fall out of love. It, it happens in a moment you know we like something or we don't like something and all of a sudden you know we we hate spinach for years and all of a sudden we like spinach it's trying to get to that moment but so i want to start a process so typically i work over a two-month period to do five sessions in two months and for most people that's enough of a shift to to send them on their way and that's that's what I see my job as is getting them in a position where they can start to realize for themselves a that who they are is good enough and actually they can see with clarity now what's going on and therefore yeah. they can do something about it great so thank you Brooke that's gone on for quite a bit longer but I think it's really valuable no no that's, that's <laughs> I, I mean I mean just longer than than I'd anticipated but because it's most interesting and I loved hearing about your work and thank you I'll put your website below. This will go onto YouTube and um, you know wherever we want to share it because that that way people can connect with you. And, Brilliant! Uh, I look forward to the lawsuits. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Humor. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Yeah, bye. Bye. Just.